Hey guys, today I'll be reading The Oak Inside the Acorn by Max Lucado and illustrated by George Angelini. So, this book is about an acorn who is in, who's on his mother tree and he doesn't want to leave but then he becomes like a bigger tree. <coughs> I won't spoil it for you anymore. <laughs> um, is that the first page? There we go. The acorn looked at the world around him. Green hills rolled their backs in the distance. Bright, daisy bl bright daisies bloomed below him. Above him, and a family of puffy white clouds floated through the blue sky. The world looked so big, the little acorn said to his mother. I'm glad to be right here with you. There you go. His mother was tall, was a tall, beautiful oak tree. I'm glad, I'm glad too, my little acorn. It's good for you to be here with me now. But when your time comes to go into the world, you'll be fine. I'll be afraid. Mother Oak hugged Little Acorn in her strong branches. Within you is a great oak. Lit it was a great oak, Little Acorn. Just be the tree God made you to be. The thought of letting go and leaving the safety of his mother's branches was scary to Little Acorn. So he tried not to think about it. But, but deep down inside, he knew the time was coming. One by one, his brothers and sisters had been letting go and saying goodbye. They had been afraid too, but their mother had assured them, them with the same words. But they knew it was a great oak, just be the tree God made you to be. Each time he, he heard this, the little acorn would look at it himself and say, An oak in me? He was so small, it was hard for him to believe that he could ever be a tree. Um, that's the picture. Sorry for doing this face, I just like doing it like. <laughs> Sorry about that. The time to let go came sooner than Little Ac Acorn wanted. It started with a bump. He was resting on some afternoon, Thank thankful for the coolness in the sh shadow of the leaves, when thud, the tree shook. His mother's branches trembled and little acorn began to swing back and forth. A farmer's pickup had accidentally backed into the tree trunk. Little acorn had swung before, stirred by the wind, bumped by climbing kids, and each time he'd always held on, but not this time. He tried. He pressed his thin stem into a branch as hard as he could. It didn't work. He was a heavier acorn than he used to be. Mama? Okay, sorry, sorry. He was a heavier acorn than he used to be. And his stem began to pull away from the branch. Uh, oh, Mum? It's okay, little acorn. Mother Oak assured him. You, you can't hang on forever. It's time. You've got to let go. Down he fell, flipping over and over, softly slipping through the leaves until he bounced on something hard. He had l landed in the back of the pickup truck. The, tr the truck vibrated and began to drive away. It's okay, little acorn, his mum called out. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. Little acorn barely heard the few last words. The truck was already moving down the road. He was now road, going somewhere. He didn't know. He just didn't know where. So, it's got the little truck, and you see him falling down. Okay. As the truck bounced, so did the, uh, so did the acorn. Ouch! He said, "This is rough." 
It gets better, he heard, he heard a voice saying. Rolling over, little acorn looked up at young tree. Who are you? he asked. I am a new little orange tree on my way to be planted. How do you, what do your orange trees do? asked the acorn. By now, the road and the ride was smoother. We grow oranges. Oh, answered the acorn. He didn't know what an orange was and was just about to ask when the truck slowed to stop. Wow, he exclaimed, orangey. Who was, who was tall enough to see out of... Wow, exclaimed Orange Chew. Who was tall enough to see out of this, the, the truck? What is it? asked the acorn. Acorn. Trees. Orange trees everywhere. It's an orange grove. And that's it. And there, um, you can see little acorn and the big tree. An orange tree. Okay, little orange tree. It's time for you to be planted," said the farmer. "said The farmer said as he lowered his truck tailgate and climbed to the back of the truck. The acorn rolled away just in time to avoid the big butt farmer's boot. The farmer took the tree and was gone for a long time. Little acorn start, stared at the sky as it began to darken. He missed his mother. Uh, but her strong branches. This would be his first night away from her. The tailgate banged and the farmer jumped in. A quick sweep, he said. I'm at, uh, and I'm heading home. The little acorn had never seen a bean. He barely saw, saw this one before it sent him high in the air. He landed in the soft dirt. I wonder what happened to, happened to you. It was, it was orange tree. Little little acorn was little acorn was happy to hear a familiar voice. Is this your new home? It sure is, Orange Tree said. And it looks like your home too. Little Acorn had one more question. Orange Tree, what do I do next? Orange Tree's voice was sleepy. Just settle in, little friend, and rest. God will make you grow. And so little acorn just did did just that. He rested that night. The next day, the, that week, the next month, there in the so soft soil surrounded by the, all the orange trees, he sank deeper and deeper into the ground and slumbered. He slept a long time. Oh, yeah. here he is. And there's acorn in the big tree. And there's another orange tree up here as well. That's really big. When little acorn awoke, he didn't know where he was. He stretched. He stretched upwards. When he did, he he kept stretching higher and higher until he popped, pop, popped out, out of the dark dirt into the sunlight. Well, look who's awake! That's that's orange tree. Little acorn looked up and around. Hello, orange tree. Have I been sleeping long? Long enough to become a small tree? Little Acorn looked down at himself and said, I've changed. His round shell was now a slender trunk. You are growing up, orange tree said. Now you are a little oak. Little, little oak straightened himself and remembered his mother's words. Within you is a great oak. Maybe she was right. He thought he st stood a bit taller. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to show you the picture, sorry. And that's him right there. And that's the orange tree. When little eight... Oh, no, I've read that page. But even at his tallest, he was much taller than the big orange trees. The bushy branches grew greener and greener. Then one day, Orange Tree called out to his friend, L Little Oak, look, my first orange. So big, so the big orange tree spoke up. 
will have many more, they said. So will I, announced Little Oak. The trees in the grove laughed. They didn't mean to hurt Little Oak's feeling, but they did. You'll never had have oranges, they started chuckling. Little Oak straightened his branches and pushed out as hard as he could, but no oranges popped out. Not that day, nor the next, nor the next. next. When Farmer came to collect the fruit, Little Oak was worried. He had none to give. Well, hello, Little Oak, the farmer greeted. How did you get there? The farmer wa walked away, and when he returned, he carried a big shovel. I know just the place for you. He lifted the new little oak tree out of the ground. Bye bye, my friends, said Orange Tree. The farmer didn't take little oak far, far away. Oak too far away. He carried him out of the grove to his big white house. The farmer chose a spot in the backyard overlooking the orange grove. Let's see how you do here, he said. In the, in the, when he, uh, sorry, when he dug a deep hole and set Little Oak inside it, he placed dirt around Little Oak and pressed it tightly around the tree roots. Little Oak liked his new home for the first time. He's so taller than and then almost everything around him. This is the page to four. That's the page to four. That's the page that I just read. I'll probably do part two on this. Right? Little Oak was stretching his roots out into the dirt when he heard, Hi, I'm Pink Petuna. Who are you? Little Oak. No, oh, sorry. Um, Hi, I'm Pink Petuna. Who are you? Little Oak look, looked at the bright flower near the house. He started to answer. Uh, he started to answer, but Pink Petuna didn't give him time. Rosie is next to the house. Hi there, Ch Hi there, chirp <laughs> Rosie. Daisy is here too. That's me, said a white and yellow flower. Uh, hello, li hello, little tree. Pink Petuna continued. We are soft and smell sweet. What about you? Little Oak didn't know how to how to answer. He knew he had no oranges. Do you grow flowers? P Pink Petuna asked. Little Oak never remembered seeing flowers like roses or petunias on his mother. But still, maybe Oaks did grow flowers. Maybe I could. Maybe this is what I'm made to do, he answered. So he tried, as hard as he could. Little Oak tried to grow flowers like his friends could grow. As the sun grew hotter and they unfolded into rainbow, into a rainbow of pinks, reds and yellows, Little Oak, however, just grew taller. And the days grew longer, his roots grew deeper. Every day he tried to grow colourful flowers. Flowers. Every day he tried to grow colourful flowers, but he never could. Pink Petuna could. So could Rosie. So could Daisy. But not Little Oak. And um, that's all the flowers. Oh. Finally, Little Oak decided to rest. His branches were tired and drooping. His leaves were dropping. Even the flowers were sleepy. We're going to rest now, Little Oak, the flowers told him. And they did. The sky grey, grayed and days shortened. And the whole garden slept. While Little Oak slept, he dreamed. He dreamed of his days as a little acorn on his mother, on his mother's branch. Deep in his sleep, he heard a soft voice. Within you is great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. When the sun warmed his branches, oh wait, sorry, I need to show you this one. That's when the sun warmed its branches, little oak awoke, and he wasn't so little anymore. He 
can see see further. He had grown taller. Look, uh, he can see further. He had grown taller. Any wider, the winds didn't bend him as much. His branches were as big as his, his trunk used to be. Little Oak was becoming big oak. Many years passed, and each year he grew bigger and wider, wider and bigger, so everything in the farm's yard looked upon him. So that's little thingy. That's him again. Oh, no, there, sorry. And there. And there. So it looks a lot bigger than he did. Um, now, Orange Tree. Now, Orange Tree and the flowers called him Big Oak. He spread his big branches and looked around. Orange Tree was taller too, but not as tall as Big Oak. Big Oak was taller than all his friends. They were wide, but not as wide as Big Oak. He was the tallest. He was the widest. But he still wondered what he was supposed to do. He couldn't grow oranges or flowers. He just grew bigger. And he didn't know why. Let me show Big Oak was just awakening from a long winter's nap. Nap. His leaves, tiny, his leaves, tiny buds. When, huh? uh, when a young farmer brought two ropes and tied them to one of his strong branches, close by a little girl watched. Ro Rosie Rose was puzzled. What is it for, Big Oak? I don't know. Big Oak answered. But soon he found out. Can I do it, Daddy? Can I swing? Go ahead, urged the man, and the little girl with bright, bright blue eyes, the hair, and, no, and hair the colour of daisy's flowers, sat in the swing. Big Oak felt the tug, but barely. He was, he was strong. The little girl was small. With her daddy's help, she swung forward, not too far, but further the next day, and farther the next. Further the next. That's it. Um, if you want to get this part, I'm going to the toilet quickly. Sorry about that, but if I'm skipping it, yeah. So that was that. By the time the sun was hot and the flowers were plenty, he could see he, she could swing alone, kicking her feet higher and higher until she could see the roof of her house. Then back she would swing, back until she seemed to look straight at the ground. Big Oak loved the sound of gu little girl's laughter. Her footsteps running towards him, her squeals of delight as she swung higher and higher into the sky. Yes, Big Oak loved Little Girl. When she swung, her stood, he stood strong. When her daddy built her a tree, tree house in Big Oak's branches, Big Oak was gladly held it. When, when Little Girl stretched out to the ground, uh, what? When Little Girl stretched out on the grass to watch the clouds flow, Big Oak sh shaded her. He played in his branches, climbed his trunk, rested his shadow, and together they grew. Each year both taller, each year both stronger. When the grey skies brought cold days, Big Oak slept and the swing hung silent and the playhouse stayed empty. When blue skies brought warm days, they laughed and played. Little girl talked and he listened. And at last, 
Big Oak knew he had become a tree God made him to be. And here's a picture. One day, a little girl came to Big Oak with a little boy. Though neither was too little, they sat on his branches and talked. Big Oak held them both. And when... And when they carved their names onto the trunk, he didn't mind. Little boy pushed the swing, little girl laughed, and Big Oak protected them from the sudden rain. In in time, little girl didn't swing much, so much. When she climbed into the treehouse, she sat more and played less. Little girl was becoming big girl. The girl was now stood as tall as Big Oak's lowest branch. One day, Rosie Rosie said to Big Oak, She's growing up, Big Oak. She'll soon leave. Big Oak didn't answer, but he understood. Big Girl spent many blue, blue sky... No, Big Girl spent many blue sky days sitting on the ground, leaning back again, against Big Oak's trunk and watching the clouds drift by. Big Oak knew Big Girl had a big question on her mind because she said things like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be. And it's hard to let go. And how how can I know what I am? Big Oak wanted to talk to, talk to Big Girl. He knew what just what to say. He would say, within you is a great girl. Just be the person God made you to be. Orange Orange trees grow orange, he would say. Flowers, plant, plants grow, flower plants grow flowers. And oaks, oaks grow t- tall enough for swings and strong enough for sw- swinging and big enough to hold little girls until they become big girls. He wanted to, but he couldn't say the words. Oh, I didn't show you this one. Yes. I'm going to show you that. Okay. And that's, that's the next one. one day, big big girl was so sad. The little girl who used to giggle in big oak shades just sat, silent tears flowing down her cheeks. It's hard to let go, she said. Big oak was listening, and he had an idea. He looked down at his branch at a little acorn. I have a little I have a special job for you, Big Oak, Oak said. Next time the wind blew his branches, Big Oak let let his branch shake more than the others. The little acorn popped to loose and landed in Big Girl's lap. Big Girl picked it up and started to toss it away, but stop. She held the little acorn in her hand and start stared at it. She turned and look, looked up at Big Oak. Were you ever this small? Answering her, her own question, she continued. Of course you were. You grew into a great oak from a little acorn. All you did was become what God made you to be. She looked again at the acorn, then back at the tree. Her eyes brightened. Do you suppose that's what, what, that's what God wants me to do? Big Oak w- wanted to shout, yes, but he didn't have to. Big Girl stood and announced, of course he does. Now it's time for me to l- to let go and become the person God made me to be. Um, that's it. And I've got one more, one more page now. Big Girl smiled, placed Acorn in her pocket and began walking away. But after a few steps, she stopped and turned. She looked at the swing and the treehouse. She looked at Big Oak. She walked over to him, placed her hand on his trunk. Without a word, she said goodbye. Without a word, Big Oak said the same. And that's it. Hope you like this video. Um, goodbye. God loves you. Um, yeah, Jesus loves you as well. Hope you have a good day. Goodbye. This is Isaac. Hope you have a good day. Bye.
Oh, sorry, I didn't press that. 